REITs booming and still more to come. China, just wellness. September PMI and vehicle sales, both looking good. CR says a 3.3% GDP next year. I said that months ago. And welcome to JC Direct. This is episode 605 for 3rd October, recorded at 4 p.m. on the 2nd. My name is Simon Brown. This podcast is brought to you by Just One Lap. So let's get into, I suppose, let's get into some some uh, China data. China has been uh, an, an astounding story. We, we spoke about it last week. We know what that story is. Uh, the Chinese authorities came along and said, we are going to stimulate. And, uh, well, the stim- stimulus has kind of started, but not really yet, because what it is is cutting reserve requirements for banks, cutting interest rates. In other words, c- trying to create that spending. That spending hasn't happened in the eight days since the announcement, nine days since the announcement would make. But, I mean, this is the China 50 ETF in U.S. dollars. It is basically erased all of the losses and gone back to July of Ooh, July of 2022, so two and a quarter years of nowhere, and then two days, bang, China says thank you for coming. We will take care of that as well. The, uh, Hong Kong doing pretty much the same. I'm not sure if I can pull up Hang Seng here. Uh, index, yep, there it is. We're going to get a pretty much a similar picture for Hong Kong. We want to make that weekly. Um, and it, it's, it's, it's been... Just spectacular. It's been absolutely crazy. Hong Kong as well, pretty much erased all losses since, what, January of 2023. So almost two years of losses. Some of it was short squeeze, right? A lot of people have been telling you how cheap Alibaba, Tencent, JD.com and others are. But a lot of folks were saying, man, this is just a market you want to be short of. And some of it is short squeeze. We're seeing it on our own market. Commodities, yeah, a little bit. Richmond, absolutely. Naspass and process because Tencent has finally uh, managed to clear the $400, uh, dollars, uh, that one there I want to look at. It's finally got its way through that 400 which had been a resistance. Now, again, we're going back to March of 2022, so pretty much two and a half years. The question everyone's asking, well, how long does it last? I tell you, it's looking overdone. I think in the short term, a little bit of pullbacks is not to be unexpected, but I think it could be the real deal. Now, some folks, Viv Govender, Ryan Swiss, will tell you China is uninvestable. There are a lot of folks who are just not interested in the China story, but for now it's going. I think we might see some weakness, but this is more of a fundamental play out over the next one, two, three years. What we've seen in the last sort of nine trading days, or nine days, seven of them trading days, is absolutely crazy. We've also, interestingly, we've seen some of the hot money going out of Apple, going out of NVIDIA, uh, and rushing itself towards China. The next hot thing, they will sort of say, made my money, let's go somewhere else. So don't get me wrong, loving it, but I think we're probably going to see a bit of weakness, and if anything, that weakness is opportunity. We've got two China ETFs locally, one from Signia, one from Satrix. Satrix is my preferred in that regard, always been the one that I've preferred between the two, and certainly been doing better in that regard as well. So don't knock that out. Uh, Some events, if you are listening to this uh, today on 3 October, we've got a webcast of the uh, ETFSA event, Reaching Your Investment Goals Using ETFs. Uh, There are a few seats left at the JSC. uh, Otherwise, just get the webcast. And then uh, the team will be in Durban next week on the 8th, uh, doing the event in Durban. And then Power Hour on the 17th with Standard Bank. Uh, Adrian Seville is going to be presenting. I said before, I rate him massively. Just onelap.com slash events for more information and booking. So I did as I often do. I go and take the uh, top sort of ETF performers for the the period, uh, in this case, the nine months ending September, and I publish them on Just One Lap. JustOneLap.com slash ETFs, you will find the list. And recently, this list has been dominated by tech, and bonds. That has been the story. Yo, this time it changed. 
property. Uh, we've got the CS prop, which is the 10X property, uh, up 31.7, 31.6% is the Satrix property, the One Invest property up 30 and a half, and then banks, and then we start seeing some others coming through. A immensely strong return. Now, I want to come back to this, uh, but before we do, let's have a look, and now I don't know how to exit out of that. Uh, let's go have a look at the the loser side of the equation because there is a loser side and again it's not actually that much of a surprise yeah palladium palladium platinum platinum uh, and then some bonds coming through the one that did surprise me well a little bit designia fourth industrial revolution is negative for the year uh, and the healthcare innovation from uh, satrix also negative for the year only a little bit but still a little bit down there the question everyone's then asking is okay property where to next is there still value i tweeted it out wednesday morning the list i said caught many by surprise look i was early by about a year although as someone said i think it was a, a ghost and he said financial ghost he said at least you get paid to wait and reach because the yield is eight or nine or so percent can it continue higher is the question and i think it can I mean, are we going to do 30 percent in the next year I don't think so. But th th there, there are a couple of things that really give some thought. And again, the financial ghost had a tweet. He said, firstly, the market tends to move ahead of the rate cuts on expectation. Absolutely. Uh, but you know what? It, it is for cheaper debt. Now, many of these REITs would have sort of locked in interest rates. Uh, Growth Point hadn't. We saw them talking about that hurting. But those that have got some floating debt or some linked debt, that will certainly help. Uh, consumer spending at the properties, the malls and everything, that is going to help. Red cuts, two pot. We know all of that story. So yeah, I mean, there is some more upside coming here. It's not, as I say, going to be of the same magnitude, but it's there. There are also folks who are looking for yield. So you were buying government bonds or bond ETFs or RSA retail savings bonds and locking in 11.5% for five years. And now you're getting, what, I think it's 9.5%, uh, some really, really low rate for that same five years. Those have come down. You still want some yield. Where do you get it? Well, you're going to get it in the property space. That's where it's going to come from. We're at nine and a half for the five year, eight and a half for the three year, and eight and a quarter for the two year. Quick on those RSA retail bonds, the inflation ones, which are currently for 10 year CPI plus five and a half, which is a giant number, uh, that resets only twice a year. So it's in force until 30 October. Remember, principal goes up by the, 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 the CPI, and then you earn yourself a five and a half percent yield. Both the principal increase and the five and a half is taxed as income. But I do think to the question, is there more upside for property? I think the answer is yes. I think, you know, we're seeing office improving. Let's put it that way. Could do better, but definitely improving. Rent reversions are still negative in office, but they're not as bad. Uh, we're certainly seeing the retail space doing well, particularly your more re uh, rural uh, sort of peri-urban township malls doing great. Uh, logistics has been doing absolutely fantastic. We can't complain about that in the least. So we're seeing some positive signs that it's happening through there. We've spoken about the consumer and how they are looking better. We've got the property stocks that are still trading at discounts to NAV, which is critically important. That discount, which was about 30%, is now probably closer to 15%. On average, we've also got very much a sense of a, a just that 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 optimism, which means that that the the, the landlords have got a little more flexi room. I chatted with Janine uh, uh, Fnikirk, if I'm correct, the name CEO of Attack, talking to her around uh, uh, new leases. They have more demand than they have space. Now, waterfall, this is in Waterfall, uh, a Mall of Africa, and this is a premium destination and a premium mall. But we're seeing that trend come through. Debt levels are way down. Again, when the sector peaked in late 17, early 2018, debt levels were close to 50. They're probably now on balance sub 40%. So just a much better looking sector, a sector offering some value. My preferred is the Satrix property and the 10X uh, property ETFs, but all of them are going to do well. Some of them will do better than others. And as I said, you get yield from it, which is hugely important. So yes, it's been a great 30 odd percent this year. They also great in your tax free because of course that dividend you get is actually income. But, well, they don't play as income in a tax-free because there's no tax, so it's no worry. 
but I think there's still upside. I am still holding, and I at this point in time, I remain a happy holder, so not going anywhere just yet. Uh, the RAND, a bit of a setback on the ZAR. This is uh, something that happens from time to time. I think we got down to the low sevens on, was it Monday? Yes, I think it was Monday morning. We got down to the low sevens on the RAND. Uh, it's now trading uh, a, a little less thrillingly. It's weakened out to 1740. There are a couple of reasons for that. I want to have that template, please. Um, there are a couple of reasons for it. There was the uh, Iranian attack on Israel overnight Tuesday. That certainly has sent Brent moving a whole lot higher. It also sent the Rand. When the Rand moves, it moves. It absolutely moves. What do they clock the low as? A low is 17.02, uh, which I think was late on Friday. And then this week, the low has been 17.04. We're going to break 17. Of that, there is no doubt. It just perhaps is delayed a little bit because of other extenuating circumstances. If we look at the DXY, uh, the uncertainty around the war in the Middle East has uh, sent the DXY higher as well. It was down at just over 100. It's now 101.27. So we're seeing some uptick there. But I expect this to break 100 too. I still think we're going to be seeing some uh, a RAND strength coming through. 1680, absolutely. Chantal Marx made a great point on my TV show last week, the week that was. She said, when the RAND starts to move, it moves. There is no laziness in our currency. When it, you know, it could go nowhere for ages, but let's zoom that out to five years. I mean, look at that move there from the, what was that, pandemic levels, 1905, all the way down to 1370, then 1370, all the way up to 1965, uh, which was, that wasn't even gray listing, and now on the move again. When the RAND moves, it absolutely moves. A lot of talk about the RAND getting into the 15s, maybe 1550. I mean, why not? I, I, absolutely. I, I can. You know what? This is a round that could go to 14. This is a round that could go to 14. Would I, would I put money on that? Well, I suppose in some senses I do because I'll be shipping money offshore. But this round, when it starts to move, it absolutely moves. I mentioned oil. Let's have a quick look at Brent. I haven't had a look at this chart today, but I know what I'm expecting to see. A nice little bounce that $70 support is holding. But an interesting observation from OPEC, and they're getting a little bit stressed. The Saudi minister uh, warns of $50 a barrel oil as OPEC plus members flout production curbs. The oil minister said, and I'm quoting, the prices will drop as low as 50 per barrel if so-called cheaters within OPEC plus didn't stick to agreed upon production limits. And this is according to delegates in the cartel. Uh, they're not wrong. Uh, the point with cheating is that, so when oil's at $85, you do your quota, right? Then it drops to 70. You're making less money. So how do you make up for that shortfall? Well, you just pump an extra 20%, so you're getting an extra 20% on the 70, which is 85. Well, what does that do? Push the price down. The point with the cartel is everyone needs to be disciplined. And that's not the case. It's just not the case. Russia is technically one of the second, I think, second biggest member of OPEC, and they are just pumping whatever they absolutely can. Of course they are. They need money for their war. So I think oil sub-70, which is really good news for petrol prices, and again, that just comes back to a good consumer story left, right, and center. We're having some data coming through. Uh, the one was PMI for September, which showed a above 50 number, which says that we're actually getting a bit of expansion. It was a fairly positive PMI data point, and not surprising. You know, 100 plus days of GNU, 150 plus days of no load shedding, uh, rates coming down, a lot about September to say things are looking better. Not screaming, but better. Interestingly, US PMI, not so good. We're seeing a little bit of softness in the US. Recession, mm, I'm not calling that, but certainly, you know, the US economy could weaken by a percent and it would still be growing at two, two and a half. So some weakness coming through there. What we also saw was we got vehicle sales for September came in at just over 44,000, which is above the average. And this is a 10, no, this, I lie, this is a five year chart, my bad. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's another decent number. Now, again, 
Think about the two-part money. Again, think about the interest rates coming down. A stuck record, I know, but we can start seeing some pickup in these vehicle sales at the same time. And certainly, I, it's well known, I hold the stock. CMH is my preferred in the space. Uh, it has been, as I said, I had held it for literally ever in a day, and it finally start, has started to move. I don't know why I have that 2949 there. Anyway, uh, there's the five-year chart. It really had been going absolutely nowhere for absolutely ever, and finally, it's coming to the party. Oh, that's why. There we go. Massive resistance at around that 29.50. I picked it up. Uh, I've told the story so many times. Around 26 rand a couple of years ago. The dividend yield at that point was mid-teens, so I was quite happy to hold. I was being paid. It's now broken out. Yes, it's come back from that uh, high. What is the high that we got there? I think we had a high of almost 40. Yep, 38 and change. And then they had a trading update. And the trading update said earnings are going to be down about 30%. That's for the six months to end August. No surprise. Absolutely no surprise. It did see some sell-off. If anything, that is opportunity rather than worry. Uh, it is my preferred in the space. The other one, of course, is Motors Holdings. Uh, it's also been running. In fact, it's run a whole bunch more. It's up almost 50% off the lows. And then there is uh, Zeta, ZZD. And uh, Zeta also, uh, Zeta's struggling. It's broken. It's probably going to come back and retest that 13 level, uh, support, what was resistance and is now support. Particularly CMH, about half their money for the last set of numbers was car rentals. There were no car rentals to six months ending September. There was a little bit, but yeah, you know, the election made foreigners perhaps a little bit spooked. Uh, a very, very nasty winter. Their second six months really is when it matters, and we'll see that come through. Uh, the vehicle sales, Suzuki remains the third biggest brand. Again, that is CMH. So things are absolutely picking up and, and looking positive. I mean, there is just almost too much positivity. And I don't want to be the, the doubter and say the world is ending. That's not what I'm saying. But there's so much positivity. Our top 40s at highs, the small cap, the mid cap, they're all just trading at highs. And the question is, you know, how much longer can this continue? The answer is a very good long time. I mean, I podcast a few weeks ago, a month or so ago, said it's a bull market till it's not. However, there will be pullbacks in that bull market. And pullbacks could be 10%. Absolutely, it could. You know, we need the load shedding to stay. We need global economy to carry on going. We need World War Three to stay away. We need to get the US election out of the way, not because it it matters. And I'll go into details why it matters in a, in a future podcast. But, you know, we need all of those sort of things to come and to continue playing in our space and working for us. But at this point in time, it remains a bull market. And uh, best place to be in a bull market is long absolutely long and that's where well i am and i hope all of you are as well leave it there for this week remember all the events coming up uh this week next week and then the 17th just one lap.com slash events for more details my name is simon as always look after yourself if you can look after somebody else as well we'll chat again next week cheers all